we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we just give you thanks and praise, oh God. We just give you all glory and honor, Lord. For it's, it's you who, who the ones who sustain us, Lord God. You give us peace. You give us protection, Lord. Lord, we thank you, oh God, really just how you look to uh, be here with us, oh God. Lord, we thank you for this word tonight, Lord. Lord, we give you all glory and honor and praise for all that you will show us, Lord, according to your will and purpose, oh God, that we will hear, understand, and we will look to do all you have called to do by your spirit, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Now, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is the third time I'm starting. <laughs> and God bless you. Uh, I thank those that actually will see this page. Uh, and I really am uh, excited about really what the Lord is doing in this time. Uh, the things that are going on around, around us and all around the world, actually. And this is a place where we need to know and understand what is God calling us to do. And looking at here in First Kings chapter chapter seventeen, looking at verse one here, and we're gonna we're gonna take a take a look at that, and going to actually going to read through uh, through some of this. Uh, let's do this here. Let's let's go here. That's verse one here. It says Elijah the foreigner who was an alien in alien resident of from Gilead told Ahab as the Lord as the Lord God of Israel lives in whose presence I am standing there will be neither dew nor rain these ne these next several years except when I say so that's what he says he says when I say so now let's, let's go on later uh, this message came to him from the Lord leave here and go uh, into the hiding at 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 the water Cherith and where it enters the Jordan River and you will be able to drink from the brook there and I and I've commanded some crows uh, or some in some verses ravens uh, to sustain you there all right now let's go back here to verse 1 here and let's take a look at what the Lord is saying here in this verse here because this verse here really is very important and some of the things that's being said here. Now, there's three parts in here in which the Lord is talking about in here and how he really, uh, he wants uh, Elijah really to speak. And one is, he says, okay, it, Elijah, Ahab looked at Elijah and he knows that, who are you? You're a foreigner, okay? And just as the scripture shows here, it said he was a foreigner, but he was also an alien resident from Gilead. Now, to be an alien res resident, that means that they didn't really know him either. He was strange to them. And in some versions, it, it means it speaks of him as being a stranger. Uh, they don't know who he is. They don't exactly know, really just a lot about him, a little, little, little history of, about him, but they didn't really know who he is. And so, uh, it's a place where that, how do we relate to that? A lot of times, which I remember when I first got saved, you want to be around the people that you know. But then being around the people you know, actually you can't really be who you're supposed to be in the Lord. Because really you're still acting just like how you was because actually they know you. And when you do go around them, actually when you, and you're trying to serve the Lord, they really want you, con they want you to conduct yourself the way that you normally would do, how you normally behave. But you can't act that way because you find, feel restraint. And so they look at you kind of strange when they're like, what's up with you? What's going on? Oh, you saved now. I mean, these are some of the things that you will hear because I heard them myself. And that's a place where they, you, you are trying to serve the Lord. In this time of the pandemic, uh, where how the, it seemed like we just been booted out of the building and <laughs> booted out into the street that we cannot come in fellowship. But how much are we in fellowship with the Holy Spirit? How much are we engaged with, with the Lord in prayer in time of prayer on a continuous basis all day long and saying, Lord, okay, I'm out here. What is really you you want me to do? What, well, how, is, how are things going to conduct myself? Because we have come so accustomed to being inside of a building to fellowship that now 
we're learning how to be out amongst the people, but how to be in the presence of the Lord. That's part of the scriptures I have down at the bottom here of uh, John chapter 17. Uh, here in verse 14 says, I have given them your word. Now, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you receive the word of God at that point, at that moment. You say, Lord, I want to serve you. Lord, I'm, the, I'm in you. And yes, and you are in him. And the, thing, the great thing about that is that Jesus says, let's like this. He said, the world has hated them. Because when you're in him, the world's going to hate you. The world don't care anything about you because they belong. They do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. So that means that you have become an alien to them. And they're wondering, what in the world, where are you coming from for this, with this? this? This language you started to speak now. So that means that now you are going to be set apart, but it's for the glory of God to pray for them, really to pray for their protection, to pray that they can come to the Lord too. Because you know that actually it's safer now to be in the Lord than it is to be in the world. And that's a place where they have taken that stand that you find out really just how much of a man or how much of a woman, an independent woman in the Lord or an independent man in the Lord that you are. Because now you are starting to face things and you're standing up in the presence of the Lord to do what God has called you to do. And that is to give his word. That is what's necessary. Now, the other part about this, of what he says here, he says, the Lord tells, the Lord tells us, us that although we are in the world, we are not of the world. All right, now, uh, let's see here. Oh, he read, okay, I got it. But let's go back here to the other scripture here. All right, because this gives a whole scripture. All right. Here's the second part. And he told Ahab, Ahab, as the Lord lives, as the Lord God of Israel lives, in whose presence I am, I am standing. Now, do you know that we are standing in the presence of the Lord on a continuous basis? Do you know that we are in eternity present? To reign with him. Uh, what was it? In 1 John, 1 John 4, it said that how that just as he is in the heavens is how we are on the earth. That means that we're God in the earth as he is God in the heaven. That means that where we are, heaven is right there with us. We have a prayer. We pray. I, I speak about this all the time. That we say, let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means that if we have a perspective and an awareness of how heaven is according to his word, then we will speak just what the Lord really wants us to speak in the earth because we have a, a good perception of how the heavens are, where God reigns. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And we, we're doing that on a continuous basis. Guess what? The earth is going to be blessed. It's not going to be cursed. The curse is taken away. When Jesus came, the heavens opened, the word says. And the, the, the heavens didn't close. They stayed open to those who look to serve him. Because if we're hearing his voice, we will look to do his assignment, his will, because we are from heaven. We are ambassadors in the earth. What is an ambassador? An ambassador is somebody who looks to come to bring peace to the earth. That's what they, that's what, that's what they do. Okay, now, here's the third part. He says, there will, there will be neither dew nor rain these next several years except when I say so. That means that his words have power and authority to speak that the rains don't come but then also speak that the rains do come. And what he says here is that, is that these next several years, that's what he says, these next several years we are not going to have any rain. Now, that affected Elijah just as much as it affected everybody else. But now, we have a problem here in our own time. Is there a word of the Lord in the earth? Are we reigning the word of the Lord over the earth? Or are we really get caught up in the pandemic and we speaking only the things which that are about the pandemic? Are we speaking only the things about really just about just uh, the stimulus? Are we speaking only about 
I just need a job or my parents need a job or uh, my loved ones need a job or I need income. I, I don't know what to do. We have the answers. That's the key. We have the answers. The theme of getting back with the Lord. Speaking what the Lord really wants us to speak to bring heaven to earth on a continuous basis the way he really wants us to do it and everything will be a back to the place of where we are supposed to be and being blessed now every person who really trusted in the Lord we're blessed and I'm encouraging everyone out there with that probably you may be struggling right now you may be in the place where that you're not sure really just what's going on that now when you hear something of the Lord act on what God says were you struggling in some? Yes. Elijah struggled himself in giving the word of the Lord. And we're going to discuss that in a latter, latter, latter time coming up, maybe possibly next week. But the key is, is this, is doing what the Lord says so that actually change can come, so that the blessings really can come, that they're really supposed to, how they're really supposed to come. Amen? Okay, now, let's go to verse verse 2 here now this is here where he says later this message came uh, to him from the Lord leave here and go into hiding at the water ch Cherith where uh, it enters the Jordan River and you will be able to drink from the brook the, uh, that brook and and I've commanded some crows uh, possibly ravens uh, some some translations say to sustain you there. Now this is the now this is another part there where the God speaking to him, where he is in eternity present. Now he's telling him about eternity future because I want you to go somewhere. This is where you start to take steps of faith according to hearing the voice of the Lord, listening to His voice, listening to His words. That that you now look to step out by faith and go to where God has told told you to go. You don't know if it's going, you don't know really if it has been raining or not. Because there's already a famine in the land. You're doing only what God said. Hey, that now there's a famine here. Now, I've spoken the word. When the rains come, it's going to be according to what I say. And that's what we can do. Because we have that authority. Matthew 28, 18 says that I have given you all authority. Okay, he says, I have authority in heaven and on earth to give you that authority to do what I've called you to do, to make disciples of all men, to speak, to speak life to people, to do the things that God really calls us to do. And we're going to be looking into some of this when we get into Luke, because this is a place where you got to know that, that we're bigger than what we are. The government says that we're non-essential as far as, as far as the church, but going to a building. But we are essential. We're the most powerful entity on the earth. We're the most powerful people in, on the, in the land. But we have to come and take a stand in whose presence we stand. This is where we stand in the, in the presence of the Lord. In eternity, we're standing in him. Now he, now, he called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Ephesians said that he ordained and chose us before the foundation of the, of the earth. That means that from eternity past, he already knew when we we're going to get saved and what we what our assignment was going to be, what our gifting was going to be, when we look to come to him and become mature enough so that actually that we start to bless the earth. <laughs> That's good stuff there. God, oh boy. Now, but see, again, it's a little excited here because when we look to do all that God really called us to do, it is going to be such a blessing. It's going to be such a blessing. And so we have to look at it from that viewpoint of knowing that we are in the Lord and that the Lord really wants us to, to take our position in eternity present and walk into eternity future doing all that he really wants us to do. That's the key. All right. Now, we're looking at, we're looking here. Now, when he tells him here in verse 3, he says, leave here and go into hiding. Into hiding. Okay? Now, <laughs> he 
people want to mock you. People want to uh, uh, persecute you. They want to really to ridicule you when you speak things. You know, they say, "Yeah, you 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 got faith. You got faith to believe." And you're told her, and you you left her. Why? Heal yourself. Isn't that what they told Jesus? <laughs> okay. There's time with actually that, that I that I felt that actually that I need to get away from my friends to get myself in the Lord the way I'm supposed to. And so I did that. It was almost like going into hiding for about two years and got myself grounded in the Lord. And and do what? And to let myself be fed the word of God by the Holy Spirit. To engraft to engraft myself and to put myself in the place where the actually all I was doing was trying to get in God's word, to get to know the God's word. People said it actually that that was the white man's word. You know, hey, look, you can't believe that man wrote that Bible. You don't, you can't read, you can't believe that stuff. And I wanted to really find out because I had tried everything else. And I looked at some religions and I said, okay, uh, I don't see no change in certain people and things of that nature. And people tell me, like, you know, when, when you get the Lord, you know, you, you will change your life. And that's what I was looking for. And it wasn't until I had two little boys that I had to raise up that I finally said, Lord, I want to know you. Where am I supposed to go? What church am I supposed to be a part of? There's all these different organizations out here. Which one am I supposed to be a part of? And come to find out God didn't call me to a denomination. It was non-denominational, but I found out really how much people go by denomination. I <laughs> don't want don't want them call us to be denominational. He said to be in him. <laughs> in him we live and move and have our being. Not according to the denomination, but it's the case this is but this is where it gets confusing because we all confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you are a Christian and you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's who we, we, we're one body, the, the Bible says. So how can the body be divided? In the Second Corinthians says, I mean, First Corinthians, it talks about that. That how did, how can the hands, how can the hand say, say, say to the foot, I don't need you. Hello, this is these are some of the things which they become confusing. Where that, why they call us non-essential, and we got to straighten these things out. We have to put ourselves in a place where that it is, it is, it is God alone and Him only. That is, that is what we're supposed to be doing. Now, here in verse, let's look at verse, uh, verse four here. It says, "You will be able to drink from that brook, and I've commanded some crows to sustain you there." Now, one of the biggest parts about this, this verse here, it says. I will, I will, I've given, I've commanded some crows or ravens and some to sustain you there. Now, a crow or a raven is a scavenger. I'm not supposed to eat no unclean stuff. I don't want that. That's raven's food. How much, are we eating raven's food right now? Are we receiving the, the words in, in which that uh, the, the, the world is telling us? Being a part of being a part in the Lord, sometimes we have to humble ourselves and to do what the Lord really wants us to do. You know, up, um, uh, this may not be exactly what what you want to hear, but uh, in, in the Bible uh, in Acts, it said Paul was looking to go into a city, and there was a time where Acts that uh, he had to consecrate himself unto the Lord to go around the Jews and he had to cut his hair and he willingly did that but he know that actually that shaving your hair is not, it don't mean nothing but he permitted that to be so how much can we permit it to be so to do certain things so that possibly that so that we can share the word of the Lord although that might not be a place that we want to be oh you say possibly maybe you know well you know well you ain't supposed to be around uh, unbelievers that, per, that portion of scripture comes out of where that believers in the house of God. Don't be around them because they can contaminate you. Don't be unequally yoked with them. 
I heard that when I first when I first got saved. You know, yeah, you know, we got clicks and picks and all all here in the church. Be careful, be careful. Those things can cause division. But being in the world, you're supposed to be spirit and light to the people. In the church, it's going to be different. But when you're looking to do what God tells you to do, when He put when He really looks to put you in a place, that brook, that brook is a brook that actually that uh, is is actually it's like a ravine. I mean, a, a, a ravine. It's a narrow place. Okay, he said, go on hiding there. That means that when this brook, when the water starts to melt coming off of the mountains, that water's going to come down through that ravine. That's why it dried up. Because actually, when the, snow, when, the snow, when the snow started to melt, the ravine really was, uh, 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 would actually start to, um, uh, water would dry up going down through that ravine. But the same amount, at the time when that God told him to go there, it was fresh, it was crystal clear, and it was rushing real fast because it's coming down, down the mountain. And in that ravine, actually, that he was going to be fed there until a time when actually he was looking to leave there. And so until it dried up, stay there. And some ravens are going to bring you food. That's a place of the humbling yourself. We're in a place right now where there's certain things that you don't want to do, you don't want to partake of, but guess what? You got to partake of it. And the Lord is going to sustain you. This is what God has. This is the amount I have a faith in the Lord. There's things I say I don't, I don't want to do, but now I come to find out. How, how, yes, okay, Lord, yes, I hear you. Yes, I hear you. I know exactly what you're saying, Lord. And you have to go to go ahead and just do that, that part in the Lord. Okay, now, um, let's look at verse 5 and 6 here. So Elijah left and did exactly what the Lord had told him to do. And he went to, to live near Wadah Cherith, uh, where, where the, it entered the Jordan. And crows would bring, would bring bread and meat, uh, both in the morning and in the evening. And he would drink from the brook. He would drink from the brook. And just what I, just what I said. Now, our convenience of what we do sometimes, uh, when you on God, when you when God looks to bless you, it's not about sustaining you according to what you want. He sustains you according to what you need. That's that's exactly what He does. That's what the Lord does. All right, now let's go to verse seven here. But after a while, the brook dried up because there uh, there had been no rain in the earth. That means that the mountains had melted all the snow. The sun had melted all the snow. The water had run out, and now it was time to go. But Lord, but where am I going to go? What am I going to do now? But to put yourself in the place where that you're hearing, hearing the Lord speaks to you is what is always necessary to know that you are going to be in him and he is going to bless you because he protected you if you look at it he protected you in eternity past when you gave your life for life first to him where you are now in this pandemic god still has your protection god is still is still your portion god is still having you in a place where that you're healthy you're strong and you're doing that all the lord's showing you to do and you are going to be faithful to him And he's going to take you into eternity, future as well. What that, what that going to be? It's going to be blessings. It's going to be, it's going to be advancement. It's going to be, it's going to be wisdom. It's going to be a knowledge which that God said he has given us. He has given us the ability to, to create wealth. That's not only just um, uh, uh, monetary, but that's also according to things which that actually, there's a lot of things that's been going on now where the people are creating things. How much more for those that are in the Lord? But the Spirit of, Spirit of God may have already given it to you, but then have you stepped out really to try to, to do anything? When the Lord speaks, we must look to listen to Him. When the Lord is telling us something, we must look to listen to Him. Now, just to, just to really do, uh, 
uh, elaborate a little bit further uh, to look at look at this from Luke chapter four. Luke chapter four. In Luke chapter four, starting with verse nineteen. Okay. It says, "To announce the year of the Lord, the Lord's favor." And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And while the eyes of everyone in this in this uh, sanctuary, I mean in this synagogue, uh, were fixed on him, he began to say. He began to he began to say, "Today, this scripture has been fulfilled, as you've heard it." As you heard it, and he read aloud, all the people began to speak well of him and to wonder at the gracious words that he flow, that flowed from his mouth. And they said, "Is uh, this is Joseph's son, isn't it? Now, th this is a place of what we need to understand. When you speak the word of the Lord, people are going to marvel at that. But they're going to look at you only in time. You're Joseph's son. I remember when you got. I remember when you got when you when you were when you were a baby. They only speak according to who they know you are, in the earth. They're not speaking about you from who you are, from eternity, present. And Jesus says, "Today these scriptures have been fulfilled in your ears." What scriptures? The how that the lame will walk, the blind will see. Okay. Those who wish that are in bondage will be set free. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That means that to bring everybody out of captivity. If you were a slave, you're not a slave no more. You're not, you're not in, in walking in, in, in slavery no more. You're not bound by things no more. And I understand pretty much where that was. Because we've done, I've done, done prison ministry for a lot of years. And to really talk to guys and, and talk, talk to guys in jail. They were more freer than we were walking to come out of the jail. Because we got responsibilities, we got a lot of things we have to do out here, uh, really to sustain ourselves, to be and to conduct ourselves. Where in there, they were just in the word, and they were blessed. A lot of them, I mean, Bible studies were, were rich, and then a lot of time I would always tell them, "Look, in here, I said you're becoming strong." I said, "But now you're just going to be tried when you get out into the world. You're going to be tried." When, 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 when the things was that uh, they look to release you because actually now you can be tried by the word that you know. Did some of them falter? Yes. But I believe that God really has sustained them where they actually, they're walking strong in the Lord now because we had some great conversations. Now I was trying to prepare them really that at the release, guess what? All hell is going to break loose in your life. You're going to be tempted. You're going to be struggling. And guess what? You're going to learn how to stay in the Lord. Is that where we are now? <laughs> We're struggling to really see, really, Lord, what, what am I supposed to do? Lord, what's, what's, what's this I supposed to do now? Can't go to church or can't go to church. I have to sign a, sign, sign a, a, a time which I can schedule to go to be a part of a number because I go to a large church. Trying to give offerings, trying to do certain things. How how do we do we do we are we going to have prison ministry anymore? We're going to do this certain things. You know, what about prayer? What about what about certain things? What about what about? That's where we are. Are we listening to the Lord and being guided by Him? The assignments that He really wants us to do. And what is that? To love the Lord thy God with all our heart, with all our might, with all our strength, and with all our soul. That's the key. And he is going to guide us. He's going to bless us. I pray this, I pray this message has been a blessing to you. Uh, it, it was a struggle tonight really to come and give it. Actually, I've done, I've done a presentation like three times. And I know well, God really wants me to go ahead and give this message out. I'm not sure really who's going to listen to it. Or really if it's done this, done this right or whatever. But I'm doing what God really called me to do. But Father, I thank you now, Lord, for what you're showing your people, Lord. I thank you for the blessing of their lives, oh God. I thank you how you just guide them, Lord God. Let them see from eternity past how that you've been walking, you've been walking with them all the way through, Lord God, to this place where they are now, Lord God. And you're looking to take them into eternity future, Lord. God, I thank you for the dreams and vision which that you give them, Lord. I thank you how you just show them, show their life, oh God, really, which really all that you really wanted to do. I thank you and bless them, oh God, really, that God, that they be, uh, they will be, uh, 
be healed, be healed, oh God, of this pandemic, oh God, Lord, the mind, soul, and spirit, oh God. Let them be whole, spirit, soul, and body, Lord. Let them be healthy, Lord. Lord, I thank you, God, Lord, how that you healed them, Lord. For those that are sick in you, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, they be healed and set free, Lord God. Let them look to you, Lord. Father, we just thank you for tonight, Lord, and your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, oh God, that who will lead and guide us in all truth. And Lord, I speak life to each and every person who listens to this uh, to, to this broadcast, Lord God, to this stream, Lord. And I give you thanks for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Next next Tuesday uh, at 9.30, we'll be back again. I'll continue with this message here out of 1 Kings 17. And also, too, back next Thursday night, uh, Lord willing, we'll be back as well. Uh, I pray blessings over your life. Have a good weekend. God bless you.